screen share. Here's here's just some stuff I threw together in Tinkercad. Okay, so this first one is Oscar's a six-year-old Hanoverian gelding. You can hear that, yeah? Thumbs up? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> Trombones, whenever you have that riff and that pickup, that's your moment to shine. You join the rhythm section. I feel as if before this I had this idea in mind of like the perfect solo that we're trying to try and get towards and having to create something that is by all means imperfect and I can clearly hear all the ways that I mess up is uh, a bit of a lesson in trying to let go of what you're playing. Yeah, that I that really resonates with me, yeah. I'm getting great joy at seeing the fruits of our labor in the first three weeks just starting to kind of percolate now. And uh, it actually reminds me of a lot like learning a new instrument. You know, it takes so long to make your, you know, a sound out of your trumpet. It takes years before you get a really pleasing sound as, as a young student. But I certainly see a mountain, I see a mountain peak that I'm trying to get to, or that we as a group are trying to get to. And it, the, the process of hiking up the mountain is, is, is its own reward right now. So the class is about bio instrumentation. So basically we teach students how to design a device to help health industry. We found different types of simulators online, um, specifically um, Autodesk Tinkercad. I think, I think we can make a good argument that we could design our 3D part to be airtight in this, in this area, right? Yeah. So that no air escapes. I can't say that I, I didn't expect they wouldn't do well. Like they're just good students, the seniors, um, but they're, they're more than exceeding my expectation. Thank you so much, Alex. Good. All right, no, thank you guys. Here is Paisley's um, gate exam. Hi, Paisley. I think that we all at the vet school um, are acutely aware of the fact that as future veterinarians, we are um, really responsible for public health and public well-being. And so as much as, you know, as much as we hate the situation and hate what we have to do right now, I think everyone is very aware of why we're doing it and the importance of it. I haven't seen a single person, um, at least in, in my friend circle, uh, be negative towards the idea that we should, we should be safeguarding the public as, as best we can. Yeah. And here we go, tipping down. Before going into remote learning, <laughs> Um, I see a, a class is needing solo, paired, and group sense. So, um, right now, the solo thing to me feels more than just solo, it feels isolating. And I, I don't want to create more isolation right now. So, my preferences for methods are that we're all in the room together, so to speak. I was like, oh, how is dance gonna work through Zoom? Like, is that even possible? Um, but like, she's making it work. I, I give her a lot of props. She found really interesting ways of adapting to Zoom. So she would like, she would post a video and have us learn it solo or she would, walk us through exercises or say what we're supposed to be doing and see how each of us interprets it, which I think is an interesting way of doing it. I feel a little trapped in my house um, and having the class just like at least for the, that hour and a half where I'm like moving, 
feels relieving, kind of takes the stress off from the other classes that I'm taking. And after the class is over, it encourages me to keep moving. I fear that students will feel they're not getting something because we aren't dancing the way all of us think about social dancing, theatrical dancing, you know. I want them to feel that, that they're developing uh, as dancers. I built um, a microphone stand out of yoga mats and a bedside lamp that has a clip for me to clip the, the microphone. I'm very proud of it. Um, and I stuck it in my closet and I play into my closet and it sounds okay. I don't know. It's been working so far. Yep, our improv skills are coming in handy now. <laughs> <laughs>